Good morning. We'll start this morning with our scriptural reading. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, and ye now made perfect by the flesh, have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. And I read to you, from Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. Most Holy Father, we come to you this morning with bowed down heads, thanking and praising you once again for being such a good God and for forgiving us of our sins. We just want to thank you, Father. You woke us up this morning, started us on our way and saw to it that we made it here to the house of rest safely. We just want to thank you. Thank you for your word, Father, your son Jesus, that died on the cross for the sins of the whole world so that we might have the gift of everlasting life. We want to ask you today to bless those that are here, those that are on their way, those that are lost. Touch them too, Father so that they will know that without you, they can do absolutely nothing. And as we go through your word today, we ask that you stir up the spirit within us so that we can take in your word, we can do the word. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we'll call Deacon Mike to come up and share the word with us. <laughs> I have those things around my neck all the time. I keep forgetting about them, which is good because I won't, forget, I won't have to remember them. They'll always be around there. Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day out there yes, today. Yes, it is. And we got blessed with another fantastic day. Oh, I hate seeing the summer. Because <laughs> I know that snow is coming. <laughs> yes, yes. Today's lesson is um, the birth of Moses, and it's in the second. It's in Exodus, the second chapter, and. Um, Wanted to uh, wanted to start out by uh, let's go around the room. Uh, we have a go around the room and uh, read some of the read the scriptures for today. Um, first one I the first one I want to ask I want to ask um, Deacon Prince if you can read one and two for me please. Slime. Slime. And she hit. 
and with the picture. And with the and the child and there. And she laid it in the bag by the river bank. And this sister stood a far away to wait. To wait. To wait. What would be done to him? Amen. Thank you, thank you. Um, Sister Hardin, uh, would you read uh, five and six for us, please? And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maiden walked along by the riverside. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened on the child, and behold, the day wept, and she had passions on him, and said, This is the one of the Hebrew children. Deacon Ridgeway, seven, please. Christina, can you read eight? And Sister Brenda, would you read nine? And Sister Ann, you got ten, okay? said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son, and she called his name Moses. And she said, Because I drew him out of the water. All right. Amen. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, today's aim, facts, is to see that God used Pharaoh's cruel plan for the Hebrew children to raise up Moses to deliver his people from Egyptian slavery. Principle. All attempts, and it says in here, all human attempts, but I'm going to say all attempts, to oppose God will actually serve only to accomplish His sovereign purposes. And that's something that we should re always remember, that um, God has the last word. Amen. God has the first word, He has the last word, and that's all there is to it. <laughs> Application is to remember that no matter how strong an opposition to God appears, He will always use it to accomplish His purpose. And again, when he says it, it will happen. There is no, there is no doubt about it. Our, script, our, our, our lesson today is broken down into two parts. The first part is uh, verses 1 and 2 of Exodus, second chapter 1 and 2, the birth of Moses. The second is the preservation of Moses, and that's from 3 through 10. That's, a, that's the large section. So, as I like to do, I like to go. I like to go line by line. So I want to start off with the first, the first two 
be honest. Exodus 2 and 1. And there went a man out of the house of Levi and took a wife of the daughter of Levi. And the women, and excuse me, and the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw him, that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. Now, we all know why she had to hide him. But let's take a little, let's take a little journey back into a time, say maybe last week. <laughs> last week. We were we we found out, or we are, we were, it was it was pointed out again um, about the about the changes in in leadership in Egypt. So I want to go back to chapter one, verse twenty-two. So that's just one page if you if you have to turn. And Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye that is born ye shall cast every son of, of, of the Jews that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter ye shall save alive. Now, this is uh, an attempt in, this is an attempt to, to add, uh, uh, stalling the growth of the uh, of the uh, children of Israel because they re they become numerous, really a basically a, 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 almost like another country within a country. <laughs> so, but so they they had become numerous and they was trying to to stop that growth. But when you try to do something against God's word, because God's word, God said He would multiply them, and you try something like that, it ain't gonna work. Because God said he's going to do it, and that's what it's all there is to it. So, uh, just want to start with that. I want to also start one up with one other thing here. Um, talking about uh, the killing of the, the drowning of all the male, the male infants, the male babies. Male newborns, excuse me. Male newborns. Um, this is an expositor, and it was very relevant because this, we are talking about the birth of Moses. It says, the deliverance of Israel from Egyptian bondage is, of course, central to the book of Exodus. That's what an Exodus means. Exit. We're exiting out of here. But God had to provide a unique individual to lead a great, <laughs> but often uncooperative, nation from Egypt. The work of providing and preparing Israel's deliverer began with his parents birth and early life of Moses clearly fell within the period of the edict that just we just read. Exodus 1 and, 1 and 22. The Pharaoh's law had been issued calling for the murder of Israel's male infants. Now, we know that we know that he was born of he was born of a, a Levi a Levi heritage. Uh, the tribe of Levi, both parents were Levites. Um, and that's also stated in, ex, uh, in uh, Exodus, the sixth chapter, twentieth verse, and that's also in today's lesson. Just to this is background information. But because of Pharaoh's edict in killing by drowning all newborn, newborn male infants, Moses' parents had to hide him. They hid him for three months. Now I get to a point. Obviously, you can't hide. You can't hide that too long. You can go so far, but you can't hide it too long. Um, now, he hit, Moses' parents hit him for three months until it was no longer feasible to do so. So then, I, when, I, when I was reading this, when I was reading this, I was a little, I was a little puzzled, and I'm like just thinking, like Moses is the youngest of the three. There was Miriam, Aaron, his older brother, by three years. And Moses. And my thought was, why wasn't Aaron at risk? Then I continued reading on in the expositor. I couldn't find it in here. At least if I did find it, if someone else found it, let me know, because I would like to see it myself. About when this, what, what date, you know, what time frame this edict came out. Was it before or after? Because I couldn't find it. But the expositor says that the. Uh, the older, his older siblings, Miriam and Aaron, were born before Pharaoh's decree. So that's why Aaron was okay. But uh, um, I, 
I didn't I didn't find I didn't find it in here. I don't know. Did you did anyone else find it? If it, if it was said spoken, I didn't read it here. But I'm not that's 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 beside the issue. We're talking about Moses' deliverer, not his sibling at this point. So uh, um, when you look at that, you said you, when I looked at it, I said, okay, well, his siblings were born and they were okay, but Moses was the one that was at risk, and they went and the, and the parents hid him for three months, which, like I said, is a uh, quite an accomplishment because if the, anything like the kids in, my, in the neighborhood that I grew up, you constantly hear crying, <laughs> constantly hear crying, sometimes in the middle of the night, and that's when you don't really want to hear it. <clears throat> so. Uh, when I look at this, when I look at that first section, the birth of Moses, I'm like, okay, well, it's like the birth of any other child. However, the birth was one thing, but the concealment of him being there is another. So, um, I'm, I'm, when I look at this, when I look at this, I, it, I saw a couple things that were that came out to me, that came out kind of uh, interesting to me. Verse number two, and the woman conceived and bare a son, and when she saw that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. She, he was a goodly child? I was wondering at the moment what that meant. And then, I, then I thought, I said, oh, okay, he must have been an, a, an attractive baby. All babies are attractive, to, to, especially to their mothers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Especially to their mothers. But... Um, I guess it wasn't just as well as we'll read it as we'll, as we'll find out later. I guess it wasn't just his mother who thought his birth mother who thought that he was a beautiful child, beautiful baby. So, anyway, that, I, I looked at it and it was the only thing that I thought about this that this is just like any other normal child. However, with the royal edict of killing male children, male male infants. There's a, there, there's a hint, there's a danger right then and there. Now, uh, I don't know if anyone else thought of anything else that, that should be brought out. If you did, please, I'm more than welcome to, uh, I'm more than happy to, to hear that. Anyone have any observations, questions, or anything? Nothing? They didn't have planned, they didn't have planned parenthood. But that came out to me, you know, from last Sunday. But to this, if you think about how the law came out, if they could have stopped it, it was God's plan for us not to have a plan for mm -hmm. And I said, you know, when I read it, I thought about uh, you both as uh, mother and father, they knew what the law was. Mm -hmm. but they knew what God's law was also. We could play mother. The, to me, the only thing that was unusual, and it wasn't, you can't really see it here, but you'll see it later. You see it later that uh, they both were Levites. Okay, that, no problem. But when you go down into Exodus chapter 6, uh, I think it's verse 20, you find out that, uh, the, the, you find out the name of the parents, uh, Amran and Yoshebed, um, were um, uh, related before they were, Man, uh, they were before they were married. They were <laughs> they were <laughs> nephew and aunt, and I'm like, oh boy, yes, that's a little um, <laughs> dicey, shall we say? <laughs> but then, and I was thinking, I said, wow, she must be a lot older. But then I thought about it. I said, I have an aunt who's one year older than me, so it doesn't. So I so I said, that's erased. I'm not even gonna worry about that. Uh, okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Well, that was allowed. It was allowed at that time. Yeah. But later on, it was it was not allowed any. It was not allowed any longer. But that. But again, we we don't know about that until we get into Exodus six chapter. But anyway, anyway, uh, uh, when you said Sister, Sister Brenda, when you said uh, Planned Parenthood, I, I was thinking of what they. I was thinking of what. Um, a lot of the, the people at the church that I first joined, first ch first church that I was with, they called it Planned Baronhood. And I said, that's pretty interesting. I never heard that term before, but that's pretty interesting. Um, anyway, anyone else have anything they wanted to add? Nothing? Okay. 
Uh, we're going to go on to the second, the second portion, and that's the preservation of Moses. And this is where you get a lot of the meat. Okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to start at three and four. And when she could no longer hide him, she took him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river, river's bank, river's brink, excuse me. And his sister stood afar off to to wit what would be done to him. Okay. Daubed it with slime and with pitch. Is that? Ring a bell of anything? First of all, the word ark is your hint. Right. <laughs> Noah. The word ark is your hint. That's what that's what Noah did. He waterproofed it. That's why he did waterproof it. And uh, with daubed it with, with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it by the in the flags by the river's bank. And I was thinking, flags? Okay, I had to look that up. Turns out it was the vegetation on the side and the reeds and stuff. And they're pretty tall, and so they were hidden and by the river's brink and everything. The current was not strong enough to just whisk, that, whisk, it, whisk, whisk it away. So that's why Miriam could, as it says in here, could stand up far off. And it says in here, and his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. Mm -hmm. Now, this is Old English, mm -hmm. King James English. And so sometimes you gotta realize that okay, to it, to it, okay, okay, to 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 basically to see what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. To watch, exact thank you. To watch what's going to happen. To know what's going to happen. That's right. that's better, that's a probably better uh, better uh, uh, translation. To know what will be done to him. Now, I don't know if she's going to be able to do anything to save him and if something catastrophic is to happen, but she's there. And when, and I, here's something that I was thinking about, um, and I was thinking about it when I read uh, when I read some of the the, uh, the related scriptures, and and I read it in some other thing that I had. When Moses' mother put him in that basket, she had to trust God for his well-being. All right, okay, that's uh, that's something that's. Um, very difficult for a mother to trust somebody else for, for for over their children unless they know that person intimately. And she had enough faith in God to say, okay, I'm putting this in your hands. I can't do it any longer. And that's basically well, another thing I put down. Now that they can't do it, now God can. God can because now He's the one that's entrusted with that with that child. Okay, Miriam, Moses' sister, was put into position to see what would happen. Now, um, I'm looking at three and four, and uh, I, I, I'm like this visualizing it in my head that she must be at least 35, 40 yards away from this. Because she got a pretty good eyesight, you got a pretty good sight of vision, and so she can see if if the, if the current gets too strong, that she can possibly get down there to pull it back toward the, toward the shore, so it doesn't just float off. However, that wasn't put in our scripture right here. That's just that's just Mike Dixon thinking. That's just Mike Dixon thinking. That's probably why she was there, besides to find out just to find out what would happen. Five and six. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's edge. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. Okay. Now the basket was discovered by the daughter of Pharaoh when, he, when she came to wash herself. It says in here, possibly ceremonial type of a wash or... And then I read another. Uh, I read another commentary, and it said, possibly, possibly it was a hot time of the year and being cooled off by the water. I I, I don't know. It just, it just it didn't seem to be too uh, um, 
it didn't seem to be too much of a, a stretch. It didn't seem to be too much of a stretch while she was at the river. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maids walked along by the river's side, and when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maids to fetch it. And when she, opened, she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. Now, what mother or uh, mother want, or want to be mother can resist something like that? And seeing an, an innocent child all of a sudden just cry. I, I, I'm, I don't have any children, but if I saw one like that, I probably would. I probably would, would, would find. Do, I would probably do something similar to what she did. Said, "What is this kid here? Where is his parents?" What, or something like that, especially nowadays, because we don't have to worry about things like, you know, our children being being taken and killed. She opened it, and the child and the child and saw the child, and behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him and said, "This is one of the Hebrews' children," which was a correct assumption, really. Uh, I don't. They said in here. They said in one, in one commentary that perhaps it was. Um, because the child was circumcised, and circumcision wasn't part of Egyptian culture, so I, 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 I'm assuming I'm assuming that could be it. Um, that's the reason why they know that she was uh, that, that he that, that he was a, 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 a Hebrew. Okay, uh, just want to read one other thing here before I go any further. Talking about when she opened the basket. When she opened it, she found the baby crying and was moved with compassion. Although she immediately recognized the child as Hebrew, this woman did not share her father's cruel hatred of the Israelites, and especially not of a helpless infant. Now, uh, again, like I said before, uh, if I had come across something like that, I probably would have uh, had a tremendous compassion too. It would, grab the kid and say, hey, where is this kid's mother, or whatever, and found out what we can do to keep this kid alive. I would have done that. <laughs> I, and I'm quite sure everyone else here would have done the same thing because we all have a heart. We all have, we all have a Christ-like heart. Remember, Moses was reported to be a goodly child. So that means he was also a nice little kid. Okay. Not that doesn't have anything to do with it, but it might tickle, that might touch someone else's heart. This is God's perfect timing coming into play. Think about it. Just think about it. How she comes in and spots the spots the ark, the basket, spots the basket at the time in which nobody was going to go against what Pharaoh had said. That was the royal edict. That was the law. There was no one else in the world, no one else that could get away with this except her. Okay, and I wanted to, I wanted to, um, I just wanted, just want to mention something else. I don't remember. I don't know if anyone remembers uh, Queen Esther. Further down in the Book of Esther, when um, when uh, they were going to kill. Uh, when they were going to kill the Jews, her uncle, Mordecai, said, came up to her and said, this, in fact, I'm going to read it. Because <laughs> I have a tab, I'm going to read it. <laughs> I'm just going to read Esther, fourth chapter, verses, uh, four, just verse 14. 13 and 14. Then Mordecai commanded to, to, to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall there be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? And for such a time as this was Moses found by the princess, Pharaoh, the princess, of the Pharaoh's princess, Pharaoh's daughter. 
verse number seven. Then, his sis then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And um, first time I heard this term, I heard the term wet nurse. I never, I never heard that term before. Has anyone else here heard that term? I, I, I never heard that. I, I, and, I, and I had to read what that was. Yeah, I did not know that. I did not know this. I had no clue. I, I was because I was wondering, so how does someone, if they're not, you know, how if they if they haven't recently given birth, how do they be, how, how do they actually nurse a child? Unless of course, you know, and then when it said wet nurse, so I said maybe that's what they call. I I so um, so uh, she said, shall I go get, shall I go and call up to the a nurse of the Hebrew women that she may nurse the child for you? For thee. Now, it's interesting, uh, Miriam pounced on the opportunity to save Moses and give the princess a solution at the same time. The princess was probably the only person able to violate Pharaoh's edict. Again, like I said before, she was the right, she was the right person at the right time. There was no accident that she was there bathing or she was there at the river's edge. There's no accident whatsoever. God's plan will come to pass no matter what you say or do. Verse 8. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. Interesting. Called the child's mother. How did that happen? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, it's his sister. <laughs> he, knows, he knows who the mother is. So, can you imagine getting paid to take care of your own child? Oh, that is just amazing. So the princess accepts Miriam's proposal. Miriam goes off and brings her mother back. Now, uh, it says something in the expositor saying something that, uh, that the princess, Pharaoh's daughter, probably figured it out. I don't know. I didn't see it. didn't say in here that she figured it out. So I'm just going to go by, you know, there's a lot of things that we don't, there's a lot of things we don't figure out, and it's right before us. Maybe she was just blinded by it. She just was concentrating on the child, and was thinking, what a beautiful child. And she didn't think anything about it. Maybe she did. Maybe she did. Maybe she did. I don't know. I don't care. I'm just glad she did what she did. <laughs> I'm just glad she did what she did. And Farrell's daughters. And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go, and the maid went and called the child's mother. Nine, and Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. Now, um, jo Yoshebet will get to wean her own son and get paid. This is usually, this is usually about two to three years for weaning, I'm assuming I, again, I don't, I don't have any children, so I don't know. Um, and besides, uh, they didn't have bottles back then. They didn't have bottles with. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> they did not have bottles for the baby, so it had to be nursed physically. Uh, during this time, she can teach him the ways of the Israelites, and belief in God. Now, um, something in, in, the, in the expositor, and, and it was one related scriptures, and it was Hebrews 11.24, and I'm just going to just read that real quick. I'm quite sure everyone may have already read, read it, but I want to read it anyway for anyone who has not. 11.20. 11.24. Could you read 23 also? Well, I could read 23, but I was just concentrating. No, on I read mean both of them together. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was basically concentrating on 24, but 23 does apply with it anyway, so I guess that, that's, that's not a problem. Now, we were talking about earlier, we said something about faith, about faith. Um, uh, uh, Ram Ram and Yoshebet, Yoshebet, excuse me, they were 
Um, you had to have faith to put the baby out in, a, in an ark and just put him out there basically unguarded when you think about it. And it says, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months from his three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child or a goodly child. And they were not afraid of the king's command. I'm quite sure of that when you think about it, because you know, you there's a lot of there's a lot of parents who will do some serious damage if you mess around with their kids. <laughs> by faith, Moses, when he when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now, right here, it says, during this time, he, he, was, being, he was being taught, and verse 9 I'm looking at now, he was being taught the ways of and beliefs of the Israelites, the children of Israel. So therefore, he knew of his heritage. Now also, even though he was, even though he was, even though he was uh, an Israelite, he, he was in the king's castle. Well, he was in the king's house. So therefore, he got all types of benefits. Education was the, was a big thing. Also, he could come and go as he pleased. Um, he could. Um, he just had total freedom, as opposed to his brethren who had nothing. But what? But he. But, but the education thing was a good. Was, was the best thing because they taught him how. They taught him leadership, how to be a how, how to be a leader, and. In this case, that was also in this in the, the word in the word that was used in here in the expositor is providence. It was very providential that um, that he received that he received an education, learning how learning of of, of all of all the ways of the, not only the Israelites but also the ways of the Egyptians. So. He was uh, he was highly highly favored in this uh, in his in his childhood, and he received the best of everything. I mean, because after all, Egypt was the was the superpower of that of that time period. So, so uh, anyway, uh, he he received everything everything he he received everything good and lacked for nothing. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, because I drew him out of the water. Um, while we're in Hebrews, let's back up a few, go to Acts. And we're going to go to Acts, the seventh chapter, 21 and 22. Uh, Stephen's testimony before he before he became before he was stoned. In which time, in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months, and when he was cast out. Put in the ark and just pushed her, pushed her aside. Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. So he was very he was very educated and he was it says mighty in deeds also. So he received the best of everything. And yet and still, with all that, he decided he was not going to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He, did, he refused, I, I'm going to tell you right now, refusing a life of luxury as opposed to um, a life of uh, torment and slavery, he made the most, he made the uh, most honorable choice. Uh, I don't know, I don't think I... <laughs> been able to do that. I know, no, 
I don't think I would not be able to do that. I know, unless of course I had an intimate relationship with God beforehand, I probably would not have done what he did. I give him tons of credit for doing what he did. He, 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 he was he was an he was an Israelite, true and true. Yes, he received all the best that Egypt had to offer, but he refused them and took he took he took not only his people, but he took his God over all over all them riches and plenty and power and fame because he would have been the king. He would have been Pharaoh. According to this right here, because I didn't, I, I'm reading, when I was reading it, continued reading, I didn't see another <coughs> king in that line because I just saw one daughter. I didn't see it. If he had a son, I don't know. I missed it if he did. Who am going to say? I don't think he had a John. See, he fought it. He fought it with God, but he said, with God, God was a <laughs> But well, this is year, this is years down. This is a few years down. About yeah. forty years down the line, down the way. But he did not. He refused to be called. Yeah. He refused to be called uh, the daughter, the, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Right. So uh, I, I give him tons of credit for that. Uh, I, there's, there's no. There is. That's a very tough thing. That's very tough, um, especially when you think about it, unless you got unless you are. Unless you are grounded strong and rooted strong in God, God's word, it is very difficult to turn your back on these temptations. Uh, what is it? Uh, um, Psalm 37, I think it is. Psalm 37, when you're trying to uh, uh, get over, uh, uh, you, 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 you see the prosperity of the wicked, and you get all upset and everything, and you look at all the things that he has to offer. Yeah, there's 37 or 73, and maybe both of them, to be honest. I could, for some reason, those two numbers pop in my head. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but so, I'm, I, I sit there and I think, I said, he made the most honorable choice, and he made the right choice, because he was, I believe he knew that he was, I believe he knew that he was supposed to be the deliverer. I believe that he did know, uh, especially when we read, but we'll read that next week, I believe. I believe we'll read that next week uh, about him leaving. Uh, in fact, it goes on for next week after uh, after it picks up after this verse right after ten. It picks up for next week. So. Levites. Yeah, Levites. Yeah. yeah. What was the question? That's what they, uh, that his mother, his mother. Yeah, his mother and his father both were Levites. Yeah. They were both. They, they, they were they were of the they, 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 the lineage of Levi. Uh, again, like I said, one was the one was the nephew, and the other one was the aunt. And at first, I said, and then I thought I said, well, okay, they may because I thought it was a huge age difference, like it really is. But maybe not, because like I said, I have an aunt that's one year older, than me, so, <laughs> so it's not that big of it's not that big of a stretch now when I think about it that way. But yeah, anyone has any questions or anything? Obviously, yes. I, I it's funny. This lesson has hit me in my life altogether because I know for if God got a plan, you don't know, but if you follow it, then later on you know it's His plan. Yeah. And so things just seem to fall in line because I did not know Christina's mother, but when I went to see her grandmother, she said, "Would you take my granddaughter to the hospital?" The next morning I came, they said to me, uh, you have to make decisions for this young lady. I said, oh, I'm not family. But they said, the mother put your name down before she went into a coma. That's how God works. You don't have no idea what that, and I ended up being Christina's mom. And like they said, years of taking care of her, thing, not knowing. Every time I did something for Christine, it was helping me and my family. I was living that life that God had planned because I wasn't going to have any more children. So, you know, it's letting us know the lesson start off that they made that said that Pharaoh's daughter went down there to wash. Mm -hmm. That's what they used to do. You, you said the Egyptians, how they used to go to the river to wash. Mm -hmm. So that's what she was down there, why she was down there. And they did this. So it was a fair long. They knew eventually, so like, but God had a plan. Mm -hmm. And that's what happened. The plan got in motion. And when God gets in motion, you don't know what's going to happen. 
but you know it's going to work out for your business. Well, you mentioned the Nile. Mm -hmm. Men mentioned the Nile. It says, yeah. the waters of the Nile were regarded as sacred, and such washing was more of an ablution mm -hmm. with its supposed health giving and fructifying effects. So you sit there, you think about it, so okay, um, that could be the reason why I said it could be ceremonial, because I don't believe that there was, I don't believe that she had to go to the river to bathe, because she was daughter, she was daughter of Pharaoh. Yeah, she, yeah. Have service, come bring it. <laughs> so, um, but uh, one of the things that you said, uh, Sister Brenda, what, one of the things that you said, Sister Brenda, kind of like stuck out in my head too, uh, about um, about God's plan. This thing fast forwarded right after. It, it seems to fast forward right after it was put, after Moses was put in the ark. Think about it, because now the mother, the parents released release the child to to the waters, mm -hmm. to the waters, to the basically, basically, just release the child. And it was no longer their uh, um, responsibility, even though it was, it wasn't no longer their responsibility, they relied on God yeah, to take care true. of Moses right. while he was, while he was out, while he was there. So that's, that's why it's, it seems to fast forward after verse 2. Things once it got in the get, once it actually got in God's hand, because I, I I wrote down here, I wrote down here, and it was kind of funny to me when I wrote it down, and I just happened to say, okay, I wonder where I can put this one. But I said, yeah, I just just let it go until someone asked me. But here it is, God, when 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 um, Amram and Yoshebet put him in the ark, now God can do what man can. They could no longer protect the child, but God could. So they released him into God's hands, and now God took over. God took over, and that's when everything started to fast forward. Is it, yeah, exactly. Let him dry. <laughs> anyone else? Does anyone else have anything they want to add or ask? No? Okay. Well, I'm going to call the superintendent to come back up. Um... I was just uh, I was just quite a, kind of amazed at the, all the all the other stuff that I had to uh, find out. I did not know that um, I was because uh, all while I was reading this, I was wondering how come Aaron was not at risk. I couldn't figure that one out until I read into the expo expositor that it was a timing thing that he wasn't um, that, that the edict came out after after Aaron was born. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you for a beautiful lesson. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up again. And I just want to share something with you. And this week, if you all want to look into it more and bring something back to share, fine. But um, I looked in. This site here on the internet, it's Shabad, C-H-A-B-A-D dot org. And it speaks about the birth and early life of Aaron. Of Aaron? Of Aaron. Mm -hmm. It says Aaron was the second child born to Amram and Yoshebed, more than 83 years before the exodus. As members of the tribe of Levi, his family was exempt from the slavery that the rest of the Israelites were subject to. And then it says, after Aaron was born, his parents separated. I don't know this to be fact, and that's why I'm saying, mm. if anybody wants to look into it more in detail. But I just want to get to the part of the question that you were pondering over. It says, um, as Pharaoh had decreed that all boys born, even the Levites, were to be thrown in the Nile, and they did not want to risk having more children. So they already uh, okay. had Aaron. Mm -hmm. 
and they didn't want to risk having more children because this edict or decree had all had then gone out that all the boys born would be thrown in, in the night. Since they were leaders of the Israelites, their example was widely followed. Miriam, Aaron's older sister, convinced her parents that they would effectively destroy the nation of Israel if no children would be born. Hmm. She also prophesied that they would give birth to a child who would redeem the Israelites from Egypt. Her efforts were fruitful, and they remarried in a very public celebration. Aaron and Miriam sang and danced at the wedding, and soon after Moses was born. So if you want to look some things up, then that'll be great, and then we can get it together. But that does answer your question. Uh -huh. Aaron was born. It was a three-year difference mm -hmm. between the two of them. Mm -hmm. So this decree had to come out after the birth of Aaron. Was it that was on Shabbat, Shabbat.org? Dot org. Yeah. Now, I, I didn't go there. I went to another place. <laughs> Enduring Words. After you asked that question, I started trying to search around for it. But, um, Thank you. You were talking about hard things. And as I looked in this lesson, you know another hard thing was when uh, Yoshebed, and, and this is God's plan going on all the time, after Moses was taken out of that water, mm -hmm. and his sister was right there <laughs> to recommend, do you want me to find a Hebrew woman to nurse him? And so she said, sure. And she went on, and who did she bring? But her mom opened the door right there for mom. You know, what better person to nurse this kid? So mom had a chance to rejoin her son. Now, you're talking about hard things. Could you imagine? It was hard enough to put him in there and turn them over, as you say, into the hands of God. Mm -hmm. But now you've got an opportunity to build, to build that relationship. Yeah. And you know when a, a mother is nursing her baby, yes. that goes on for a while. Yes. Yes. And all of this bonding yes. is taking place. And talking about a mind thing, after all of this now, you got to give them back the back. Yeah. You got to give them back because they had already given them to, to Pharaoh's daughter. And that was the agreement. If if she really didn't have any connection to him, it wouldn't have been no problem. Yeah. But she had to give him back. And she did. See, and it was God it was working good. all the time yeah, to make sure everything was in place and put Moses as you said, in a place where he could get all of this education. Why? Because he was going to be the, the deliverer. Right. He had to have some intelligence <laughs> about how to deal yep. with the, these Egyptians. The yes. Yes, and, so, and you know, the whole scenario took so much faith for that mother. Yes. I mean, every step she made, she had exhilarated the faith of Abraham. Yes. And I'm telling you, that's what God expects for us now, is to really start trusting him when we don't even see how it's going to work out, but trusting him. But just trust him. Yeah, him. yeah. And that's the truth. And, you know, it makes me think about, you know, how God works in the life of children that are adopted. And sometimes the adopting parents get it wrong. Right. Because they feel like, I rescued this kid. I'm his mother. I'm his father. And then when that child grows up and they start wanting to know who their real parents are, 
these adoptive parents get offended. Get offended. Yeah. yeah. Why? Why? Why are they worried about them? I I took took care yeah, of you. Yep. You know, but no, <coughs> that's God's plan. Yeah. God. You yeah. know. And regardless of what we do for them, That's right. if they belong to somebody else, it's like you said, it's something inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's tough. To, it's tough. That would be a tough nut to crack. It's very tough. But if you're rooted and grounded, That's right. In the word. That's right. That's right. <laughs> it's not that tough. That's right. That's right. You, you know. understand the spirit of happening. That's right. Yes. Yes. And it's a reason for I that. Know, but see, but my, your mother, who got kids who are adopted, she said, uh, I want to let the parents come and see them. Did they take enough to let the parents see them? She said, but I'm going to let them care. And, and, that, and that's good. That was a choice she made. Yeah. But sometimes that can be... It can cause problems. It can be negative. Sometimes it can cause problems because everybody has their own personality. Yeah. And some people are not going to play by the rules. You know, it's rules and, and everything. And it depends on how you you know how you brought up too. I mean, the guy who got it. You know what I mean? Like Moses mother watched him grow up. You know, she just watched it. And, you know, she's a proud mother, you know, this is my son, you know, but she had a high dad. Yes, she had a high dad. But she knew what kind of son she had. And through it all, yeah. as Deacon Mike yeah. said, mm -hmm. all of this goodness that was bestowed upon him, mm -hmm. he still wanted to go back to his home. Yes, he and, did. and that was God. Mm -hmm. It was all in the plan. Oh, yeah. I, I, also oh, believe, I also believe that that weaning period, that's why I said that weaning period when I mean the kid wasn't going to wasn't going to grad school when he's three two and three years old. I'm saying that. But what I'm saying is she was able to give him some background on, on yeah. who God was. She was able to, if if, that, if, if that happened, and I believe it did happen, because he was, because it go 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 back into Hebrews it says he refused to be known as as the as the son, the son of, of Pharaoh's Pharaoh. daughter. And remember that these were Levites. Mm -hmm. And throughout our lesson, yes. it said they feared God right. more than they did yes. Pharaoh. Yes. So they knew. They knew. They, knew they were God-fearing people. <laughs> and when he found out, a spirit in Moses resurrected to make him understand who he really was. Who he really was. And, that, and, and God does that with us today. Sure he does. You know, when we open our spiritual man to really receive him, he's going to open up your heart, mind, and spirit to know who you are in him. That's it. And that's going to draw you even closer to him. That's right. You know, beautiful. Beautiful lesson. I enjoyed it. And, um, Let's uh, continue the study and get prepared for next week. Um, and that lesson is a comfortable exile. So we'll study that and see what's going on with that exile next week. Uh, any other questions or comments before we're done? If not, we would do dismiss. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Once again, we thank you for another beautiful lesson, Lord. Thank you for the teaching, Lord. Continue to touch your hearts, Lord. And open up our hearts and minds so we can see the word. That's all these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.